So this comes with Windows 10 Home. What the luck? Come on. Let's get rid of that Windows Home. Let's get some Windows Pro. Copy and paste my code from the description. You can also get Office 2019. Just paste my code. Woof. It's Windows Pro time. Right, oh, tell you, dear champs. Now, if you guys are new around here, come on, sub up, join the wood train, hit that bell, dingling and dong, and hey, give me a like if you like this video. Now, what is the XPS 15 like with an eGPU? Well, let's find out. I'm not going to belabor the point. Let's just get straight into it. Let's have a look at this real world project. And as you can see here now, it's like nearly as fast as the Mac. Now, I did have an RTX 2080 Ti. To be fair, the Mac only had like a Vega 64. So yeah, within the margin of an error of the MacBook Pro when it comes to hardware encoding. And even with software encoding, we're getting a big boost as well. Anything that hits the GPU, playback, effects, anything like that, Having an eGPU is going to be a much better experience for video editing because in gaming, I could get up to 5 gigahertz when I had this eGPU connecting. Now, it might not be a surprise to you. The i9 could reach 5 gigahertz in games that were low CPU usage anyway. It won't sustain 5 gigahertz. So I'll be no surprise that it can hit 5 gigahertz. Now, this is with the i9, mind you. But using the eGPU and giving the CPU all the power and taking the GPU heat strain off the heat spreader, it was amazing that this game was having clocks into the 4 gigahertz, even with Battlefield and the lower CPU usage games. Yeah, 5 gigahertz, no problems. And it's just looking at that, just clocks. I'm not even used to when gaming with a laptop, like amazing. It really is a great idea to have an eGPU. But which eGPU is best for you? XPS 15 or any laptop. So here we have just assembled here a bunch of stuff here. Now it's connected to a Razer Blade Stealth because Razer sent out the Chroma eGPU. So I thought, hey, come on. If they sent me out this, I can display their laptop as well. But anyway, we have two eGPUs. Which would you get for your laptop? And what are some of the things you need to know about an eGPU? And there are some things you really need to know. First of all, with an eGPU, you don't want to be displaying on this display. You want to be connected to the eGPU with your Thunderbolt 3 cable and then outputting to a monitor for the best performance. With content creation and stuff like that, doesn't matter. Just have it hooked up like this and you're just going to get that extra power, no problem. But if you're actually gaming, you want this output it to an external monitor. Big difference in gaming performance when you do so. It will still give you a boost if you actually just have it connected like this and not output it to an external monitor, but it's gonna be severely bottlenecked by the signal going from here to here by the sharing and then coming back into here to display on there. So that is the first thing you need to know. Which eGPU is best for you? And the reason I got this, the Akidio Node Pro, is because there's one special feature on that that makes it good. Now, if I'm going to tell you what is the best eGPU, this is the best eGPU. This Razer Core Chroma, and this is the newest one, the latest one, 700 watt power supply also supplies 100 watts of power. So through this cable here, when you connect it to your laptop, 100 watts. So that's enough to do a MacBook Pro, any Ultrabook. So that is awesome compared to this Akidio Node Pro here, which only does 60 watt. But I think one of the most important things you need to know about an eGPU is how many Thunderbolt ports does your laptop have? An XPS 15 only has one. Razer Blade only has one. This laptop, even though it may look like it has two Thunderbolt 3 ports, it does not. Okay, only one Thunderbolt 3. This is the only Thunderbolt 3. And then on the other side here, that is not Thunderbolt 3, that is just USB-C. So you've got to be careful. And this is where the limitations of the Chroma comes in. It is the best eGPU. It's fairly quiet. It's got the 700 watt power supply. As I said, it's got Ethernet built in. I'll show you in a sec. But if you want one of these things, okay, that's where the problem is. Because this is a Thunderbolt 3 dock. And look at all the connectivity you get with the Thunderbolt 3 dock. It is friggin' amazing. But if your Thunderbolt 3 is just connected to this, you haven't got another Thunderbolt 3. Now, of course, you could plug the eGPU into this, so you could connect this to your Thunderbolt 3 here, and then you could connect the eGPU here to that. But that's no good. You always want your Thunderbolt 3 device connected straight to it. And that's where this one comes in. Now. As I said before, they sent out an RTX 2080, but I used the 2080 Ti and the XPS 15 with those benchmarks. So 
It will vary. If you get a lower power graphic card, you won't get such a great performance. I will leave links to both these eGPUs in the description. And the reason I went for this one personally, and this is because I have an XPS 15, is this one because it has the Thunderbolt 3 out. So if we have a look here at the back of the Razer, what you can see is it has Ethernet, has the power switch, whatever power in, some USB 3s, and whatever IO that the actual graphics card has. Compared to the Node Pro, which has this, Thunderbolt 3 out. So you can plug your dock into that, okay? So this can plug into your Thunderbolt 3 port, and then you can plug your dock into that. Perfect if you've only got one Thunderbolt 3, which the XPS 15 has, the Razer Blade has. Even this Razer Blade Stealth only has one Thunderbolt 3. If you have two Thunderbolt 3s, I would not buy this at all. I'll definitely get this, 100%, because this is better, it's quieter, 100 watts power, has Ethernet built in. They also look quite different, right? So if you want to keep that sort of space grey MacBook Pro thing going, that sort of aesthetic, this is obviously better for you. If you're a PC sort of guy, you've got the RGB on this, it's black. If you've got a black laptop, awesome. And if you've got two Thunderbolt 3s, even better. But in saying that, you still get a lot of port selection here. You get the Ethernet, you get USBs. What more do you really need? If we have a look at a Thunderbolt 3 dock, which is this one, is great for the XPS 15, or it works with Razer, it works with pretty much every laptop, doesn't work with the Mac, you have to do a hack for that. But um, all you're getting here is a bunch of display board options, which really you're going to get on the graphics card anyway. You get Ethernet, which you have here on this Razer, and you get USBs, which you get USBs. So maybe you don't need the dock, but the one thing the dock has is Thunderbolt 3 out, so then you can daisy chain again. I really wish this Razer would have had Thunderbolt 3 out, and if it did, it would be the best Thunderbolt 3 eGPU, no doubt whatsoever. Now this one I said, 700 watt power supply, very quiet. This one, very noisy. But the good thing about this one is, when I want to change a graphics card, I just lift the lid off and then boom, just change the graphics card easily. Now with the Razer Core Chroma, yeah, you can't lift that lid off. What you have to do is, if you've got a tight desk, you have to get around here and see the RGB in there. You have to pull out all this stuff. You have to unhook that and then, yeah, you can see I've got no room, right? So you really need room to mess about and change your card. So it's cool how this slides out. And there's the power supply there, 700 watt. It is really cool, but if you're on a desk with tight space, it is very hard to change the graphics cards. And I change graphics cards all the time, being able to take the lid off. Yeah. Now, if I had my time again, would I buy this? Probably would, because of that 100 watt power it does. I probably don't need the dock, as I said before, because pretty much get all the I.O., but I really do wish this had Thunderbolt 3 out. That'd be awesome. Yeah, Thunderbolt 3 is awesome. Put one on your laptop. Makes an XPS 15 fly, makes a razor blade fly, makes them all fly. Catch you in the next one. Tally ho.